through the Institutional Framework Agency within the World Bank, uh, sub, uh, uh, through the Innovation Institution Framework Agency, World Bank supported project Georgia's National Innovation Ecosystem, uh, called GINI, implement the programs to support creation of startups, facilitates in innovation and R&D commercialization, and provides access to finance by different types of grant programs, but not only grant programs. Uh, modern and inclusive accessible infrastructure is vital for transformation of research results into new innovative products and services being available on the market. Government has established technological parks in Georgia, operating as a one-stop shop principle, promoting innovation, entrepreneurship through providing access to physical co-working space, high technology equipment for prototyping, we call it FabLab, access to business incubation, acceleration programs happening in the tech parks, and definitely providing access to the knowledge and the trainings and uh, generating educational tools for the people there. GITA continues to expand in the regions, definitely, and uh, we are already outside of Tbilisi. We have several tech parks outside of Tbilisi, but in 2020, uh, in next month, actually in October, we will have big expansion because we will open three more tech parks. One will be in Batumi, the another will be in Gurjani, and the third one will be in Kaspi. And uh, I think it's very important to have the inclusive access to the all population of Georgia, despite the fact where they live. Uh, various programs are being elaborated to leverage existing talent pool Georgia is having, especially in IT, STEM, uh, which is giving the country more attraction. Beyond the formal educational strong system, government is promoting the vocational education to strengthen skills of its people. Uh, because it's very important to meet demand from the private sector and to ensure that workers are globally competitive. Because when we are talking about the IT, we must only speak the global competitiveness because there is no borders in IT. For skills development, JITA continues to contribute in IT sector development by announcing the program for 3,000 advanced IT specialists in highly demanded professions ensuring their certification and licensing. Uh, the training shall comprise of ICT and non-ICT training courses, culminating in exams to obtain international recognized certification. 3,000 individual trainees are to be trained through the program. The program's objective is to create a strong ecosystem in the country with competitive human resources on the international mar market. According to the inclusive sustainable development, we pursue socially inclusive and ecologically sustainable growth. This requires structural transformation of the economy, enabled by technologies, knowledge, and investment in human capital, effective and flexible institutions, and modern and efficient infrastructures. Increased involvement of the private sector in the ecosystem development, this is the most vital part to have uh, strong innovation ecosystem in Georgia. Uh, let me also highlight very important uh, law that was already adopted by the Parliament of Georgia uh, that the company who will have status as an international company, uh, uh, the employer's income tax will be reduced from 20% to 5%. Uh, still, the governmental decree, uh, governmental decree is uh, in progression. So the governmental decree will detail, uh, in, in detail manner, uh, will speak about how you should apply to get this um, uh, to, to register as an international company and what you can do by this. Uh, but definitely, IT companies, uh, IT industry is part of this. Uh, uh, component, so uh, they will be, uh, their taxes will be reduced. I believe with our joint efforts uh, spent, we will receive the tangible outcomes in the IT industry in Georgia, so thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aftandi. Legita has been uh, the, one of the main uh, driving force for development of innovation and technology field in Georgia and continues to do so. So we have heard very, very nice news uh, today that uh, the taxes will be reduced uh, from 20 to 5 percent and we'll be looking forward to hear some more about this law in future. Uh, we'll discuss some more of GITA's work uh, later in the panel. However, let us uh, introduce Mr. Givi and uh, tell us about your work, please. Okay, thank you, Mariam. Uh, first of all, it is my pleasure to be here. Greetings to everyone. Um, thank you, organizers, and especially Anatoly and all sponsors for this event in very especially hard days and times. Um, very interesting and very uh, important announcement from GITA, and it definitely will help a lot of local companies. Let me tell a few words about us. We do software development. When we started, when we started, when we started, we started we a revolutionary app idea. We wanted to create a factory for software, and we have mainly focused on so quality, on people, on agility. Right now, I can say that Despite a very challenging path we passed, we are at the we used all of our 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 with more than 100 projects done and local we work locally with top companies and started our journey uh, on international markets. Um, Few words about IT industry. When we started, we envisioned that we saw that IT market was like if you see landscape, it was small teams and companies, a lot of them, and few mid sized companies, no large companies. And our vision was that after five years, after six years, there will be large companies. And this is now happening. It will happen. Yesterday, we heard announcement about big companies entering our market, and it will be reality in one, two years that in Georgia we will have. We support of these kind of initiatives, we will have large companies, and that will be huge progress for our, our country. Thank you. Thank you, Gibby. Thank you. We are hoping so as well. Mr. David, please. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks, Anatoly, for inviting me. It's a very good event. Thanks, Vegeta, for, for its innovation. I'll introduce myself as, as an investor and businessman. Eyal here is my partner uh, and managing Webby's, which is a software development company working with a lot of customers from outside of the country. But I think the story of how I got here and how this was built is very interesting. We, we I was a manager, and at some point in 2010, I started to invest, was lucky enough to invest in companies who did very well and wanted to, uh, to open additional startups, but the development costs in Israel were uh, very expensive, and we wanted to find a place where it's uh, possible to develop and it's cool to be in. Uh, Eyal came here and found very good people, and we started to develop for our own startups, and then other companies in Israel said, can you help us? And Webby's was, was built and grew very, very fast. Um, and then we realized that there are also interesting startups here. And with uh, such programs as, as Gita, it became very attractive to me as an investor to invest here, and I invested in a company that is now doing very well and is part of the Gita um, program. And this uh, corona, which is a very difficult uh, situation everywhere in the world, is changing the way things are. And, and areas that before were more difficult or didn't enjoy advantages now can enjoy more advantages. And I think that in some way, the corona may help Georgia become much faster, um, really the leading digital economy of the region. And when I say digital economy, it's not only IT, it's digital uh, advertising, it's uh, digital content creation, and I think there's a lot of human resources here that are very capable. So if, if the agenda today is how to make that happen faster, I would name four things that can make it faster. The first thing would be to set it as a priority. You know, I was a pilot in the Israeli Air Force, and we always say the first thing you need to remember is what is the goal. Make it known, make sure that the tower up there makes all the pilots know what the agenda is. So the agenda is 
a priority to make Georgia a leading in digital economy. Then, in order to achieve that, you need to move to the second step, which is a lot more education. Make sure a lot of the people here get easy, accessible, affordable, real-life oriented education of how to become really productive uh, people for that uh, economy. There are a lot of programs here, it can be more, and there needs to be better ties with the academy, between the academy and the, and, the, and the working companies to create a much more productive generation of new people. The third thing that needs to happen is actually bring people from the outside back to Georgia and people who are not Georgian to come work from here. 5% is a very attractive uh, proposition for individuals who are free because in the past they had to walk to their office or drive to the office, now they work from home. So where is home? Home is where there's air, there's adventure, there's sun, and there's good people, and Georgia is one of the top five places that I have been. You know, I took my son here, and we spent now a week in Georgia having amazing celebration and ending it by opening our startup here in Georgia and registering it here because it's a very attractive place to set up a company. It's a very attractive place to get people to work with you. Of course, we have Webby's, which is a fantastic development company, but it's an environment that I believe will be very nurturing for business. So attract people from the outside back to here instead of telling them, hey, you're very, attract you're very good, go to Sweden, make money, or go to Germany and set at home. No, let's bring the, the guys back here and let's actually bring the Swedes here. Let's bring Israelis here. Let's make this a prosperous because if you are a young football player, if you play next to Messi, you will get better. So you have to help other people come in here so the young generation here will be better. And last but not least, we have to create incentives for foreigners to invest here, to develop here. So the, this law is one step. We have to increase the development of incentives for investors such as myself to come in, in into Georgia and to invest. And we have to make sure that the money from this investment stays here. So if, if what to do now is just one, two, three, four, everybody work together and everybody will win from this. And number one, it'll be Georgia. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, such a nice uh, introduction. And uh, we are very happy that you have uh, established in Georgia as an international company. And we are hoping to attract more and more companies like yourself and expand the market. And I believe that this forum and the, this kind of events are the ones who also help and dedicate uh, to expand the market and to attract more and more companies in country. So thank you. We'll, we'll come back uh, to you with some more more of international advices. Thank you. Uh, Mr. George, please. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to that brilliant event and for of all of the good work that Strategist together with GTA is doing for the local market. Um, let me present myself. I represent Axios Holding, which is a multinational holding company. We hold a number of uh, fintech companies, mostly fintech companies that operate uh, around the globe um, and due to the nature of our businesses which is mostly online we do most of the technology ourselves we do uh, software development and all of the engineering um, ourselves and um, due, to, due, to, due to the fact that um, resources in Georgia have always been scarce for us for our scale we established most of our um, technological base in Ukraine. So we, we run uh, a number of te technical companies that employ around 200 um, software engineers uh, and some other professionals, IT professionals as well. So being a Georgian myself in a multinational uh, holding company, I would love to bring uh, all of the investment that we're doing in, in IT to Georgia, which, which is a couple of million US dollars at least a year. Uh, unfortunately, up until now, we were not able to do so because of the lack of resources that one can find uh, on the local market. Um, for now, we are able to bring uh, small to mid-size projects of ours, but not the lar larger ones. Larger ones, I mean the ones that uh, have to have at least 50 to 100 people of uh, engineers. 
So this brings us to the subject of today's discussion, and I would love to stress a lot about the um, about what has been said before, um, including the the education, and together with uh, with the amazing uh, things that GTA with strategist and EPAM is doing in regards to the education, I would also want to stress uh, about the long-running strategies of education, which is bringing children closer to, to technology, uh, which is reducing the friction uh, between when, when, when children start to realize if they are able, capable or not capable of doing technology. We have to bring them closer to, to expose them uh, to this logical thinking earlier uh, in their development stages in order to uh, reduce this false preconception of uh, having to have a PhD in math in order to build a uh, successful IT career. This is no longer a case. So um, I think uh, starting from the ground up is, is the way to go for a longer running strategy. Um, being a small country, we should get all of the people that we can. So, as much as as much as uh, as much people, as much children can uh, start doing it in their early ages, the better. Also, reaching out the regions, as it was said before, um, this pandemic has taught us that uh, distance is no no barrier anymore. So, bringing education closer to technical education closer to the regions where it was out of reach before should also increase our chances of having um, more professionals uh, being able to serve or work for the industry. Also, of course, not to be forgotten that uh, the recent investments that have been made in order to support startups is, is a great, um, great path because all of the professionals that will be uh, developing in Georgia will have to stay to Georgia, in Georgia, and if there will be no demand for that, they will eventually leave. So we are on a good path, really, I believe in that, uh, and we'll just have to go a bit further for a longer-running strategy. Thank you, thank you, uh, George, for sharing your ideas. Uh, and uh, definitely I cannot agree more uh, to you that education is one of the main pillars of uh, building uh, economy. And uh, generally our uh, government strategy has been the uh, last couple of years to build a knowledge-based economy. So that's where we're going. And I believe that, um, like yourself, you have been working in Ukraine. Uh, many companies has begun to slowly transfer their operations back to Georgia as our talent pool is raising. And we are hoping that this trend will continue and we will see more and more uh, companies um, uh, coming to Georgia as well. Um, so, uh, thank you for the int introductions. Uh, let's discuss a bit more uh, in details uh, uh, the industry as well. I would like to address to you, uh, Mr. Aftandil. Uh, could you please share with us uh, a little bit more about tech parks, which you have mentioned in your speech, and how effective has been establishing and building techno parks in Georgia. And generally, if you could speak uh, a bit, what could be done to involve more local companies and to get give more services to the local companies, not only startups but different IT companies and international companies as well. Thank you very much for this question. And the uh, idea of the tech park uh, is uh, uh, several, several things. Mm -hmm. the, the main idea is to people who have some innovative ideas, they should have some place where they c can go, and the people will help them to realize uh, their innova innovative idea. In, in paper, it looks ideal, etc. But of course, it's not as easy as, as, as I'm saying now. It's a lot of complex uh, process, and etc. In Tbilisi, Tech Park is performing pr um, uh, quite well because there are a lot of startups and also developed companies who has headquarters in in in, in uh, Tech Park. Uh, for example, Acer is there and uh, also others, uh, and uh, uh, they are creating synergy, which is very important for the uh, startups uh, who are still uh, looking their 
best business model in order to develop from to the experienced company. There is also a lot of training facilities there and also the space where they can work together and interact with, with each other, which is very important. Uh, as, um, as it refers to the regions, in regions mostly uh, the tech parks are oriented to spread the information and also to provide the specific trainings uh, and develop the skills that is uh, lacking in the regions. Uh, in, in Zugdidi or in Tel Aviv or in, in Ruhi or in, or in, in Ahmeta. And uh, we think that uh, it will be totally different situation in Batumi. Uh, I think that in Batumi the, the tech park can provide quite good competition, also tech park to Tbilisi. So uh, because there is a strong university in Batumi and also the Maritime Academy and etc. So there is a quite good foundation and businesses there that can be very helpful to develop uh, develop ecosystem. And uh, uh, definitely, I mean, for, for example, still the today's topic is about the IT. So I would like to stress that for the IT specialist, Tech Park also offers a uh, uh, place where a freelancer can go there and see it, use a high mm -hmm. fiber speed optic connection, uh, 100 megabit uh, global uh, internet speed and etc. free of charge, of course, everything is free of charge. Uh, they need to come, just take work and, uh, and bring their own computer. Wonderful, yes, please. Can I comment, I, I think, uh, you know, I'll share a little bit of Israel. And, and how government, uh, when they wanted to help innovation, what did they do and how did they get this to really be connected to the business itself? I think that you have to strive to actually collect the private sector to the government sector as soon as possible because that puts the startups or whatever you develop there in a commercial context. So uh, there were all kinds of incubators which were privatized and business people took in and the government realized in Israel that it's very difficult to create a commercial savvy company that sits in a government facility. It just does not work. So you gotta take government funds and take the government support and take the back wind that the government is ready to support and let the business people take it from there and make the startups really uh, um, be connected to the street. Sometimes you have all kinds of facilities here in Georgia that are a little bit far from where the action is, the business. So you have to try to create a situation where the government is in the business street and works together with the companies to help the young companies become really commercial success. Otherwise, they just don't make it to the real world. The same has to be with education. The education has to be tied to the companies who will later on employ those people. And actually, the ones who should pay actually for the, 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 the education should be at the end of the day those companies and not the students. Because students can't come here and pay 2,500 or 3,000 to learn. The companies have to take the commitment, we will take you, if you're good we will take you, and finance their studies. That should be a really different approach to how the government works with the companies on education and on innovation and on helping investors from the outside. It has to be like working together and, and mixing it a little bit. Uh, because Georgia, from tax purposes, and this is a great help what you've done here, Georgia could be a super attractive place for an investor like me. Because not, it's, it's not only great economically, it's fun. It's, it's a fun place to be. The air is amazing. The nature is, is outstanding. And, and the key is really working together. And, and you guys shouldn't be scared. Of, of, of us as companies. You should actually use us to reach your goals because ultimately your goal is if in five years there's additional 15,000 new people here and additional 5,000 people who came from the outside, we have generated $70 million a month being poured into buying apartments, buying cars, and shopping. So, so really, and this is ultimately the, the, the goal of, 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 of the government. And the more the money stays here, the better it is for this country. Yeah, thank you, Mr. David. I, I believe that that's what we are going for and that's what we're aiming for. And just today, I'm, I'm also representing the Georgian ICT cluster. And from our experience, I can tell you that, that 
we have started working together with uh, some educational institutions to provide the assistance and directions how to identify the needs on the actual market uh, for the certain professions and what are needed for uh, companies to, who are operating on today's market. Very interesting. Y yes, so I believe that this, this is the direction we are taking steps forward and this is how we make sure that uh, business has uh, the necessary workforce from five years now to develop their products uh, in house in Georgia. Correct. So thank you. I will, I will come back to you again with some questions. And uh, my next question would be, uh, thank you Mr. Aftandil as well for sharing some more information about tech parks. And um, I believe uh, this, um, uh, my next question goes to Mr. Givi. And it would be from a local standpoint of view, uh, as a local Georgian company, what are the main challenges uh, you're facing on an everyday basis as being in an IT industry? Uh, and uh, what do you think that could be done to help IT companies more in uh, coming years as well? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, I, I will speak on behalf of uh, software development companies because sure. IT industry is quite uh, big. Um, on one hand, we all agreed in ICT cluster as well that resources and lack of resources is main challenge. On the other hand, uh, when you have, we grown up several good, talented people, several, maybe hundred, uh, in, in previous years, those guys need then challenging projects. So it is uh, depending on each other. When we started um, company, we were five people, and the main problem we had was when we approached other companies, look, guys, uh, outsource us. We will write code for you. The most of companies were frustrated with working with local companies. It was very low quality for them, and so. Um, it took us years to become uh, interesting for local big companies like big banks, governments, and so on. I believe it, it takes time. I believe it, the, this, the both challenges, uh, getting more attractive projects. I believe that our next goal for, is for Wandio is to participate in putting Georgia on the software development map. This is what we want to do in the next few years. and. Um, by doing this, uh, resources uh, and the problem with lack of resources will be solved as well. And also, for sure, education is a huge problem and huge challenge, but with only educated people without projects or, or projects without educated people is nothing. So we, we, think, we believe that both will go uh, in good and uh, correct direction. And for sure, low taxes. This is the the main um, pushing forward for um, for companies like us. Thank you, thank you uh, so much for a question. Uh, so, Mr. David, <laughs> again, uh, again to you. Uh, so, you have mentioned quite of uh, challenges and quite of uh, advices so that uh, we could be doing uh, to advance the Georgian IT market and uh, make more attractive for international companies. Uh, could you share with us what are uh, the best practices that you have came across uh, well, during your career and being coming from one of the uh, very advanced country in technology and IT? Israel, what ha have been one of your m biggest takeaways that uh, made uh, your con uh, Israel uh, very successful in this sector and what you think would be uh, interesting to implement in Georgia? Okay. Could you share with us? I, I, I'll, you know, I, I will share with you my thought process because sure. this is what I've learned in, in the Israeli Air Force when you apply this, they, they teach you first how to think because you, they don't know what problems you will face, they know how to help you face them correctly. Um, so, so I will tell you how I go about it. First thing, what is the goal? What's the goal? What's working with me? What's working against me? Right? How do I make more things working with me, less working against me, and what is my number one competitive advantage? So what does Georgia have, really? Smart people, right? Great air, great tax scheme, great location, those are advantages. Low pay, relatively cheap time, right? Well, it doesn't have a lot of 
local industry, right? It doesn't have a lot of local investors, right? It doesn't have a lot of funds. Gita has a little bit, but not a lot of angel investors, right? So you got to use what you have and attract what you don't. That's, 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 that's business, right? So if I want to advice, I would look at the things that are most precious in what I have and make sure I protect them and take the things that I mostly need that I don't have and take actions to get them, right? I would take actions to protect my brain and grow it here, education. I will protect that the time here would be cheap for the next five years. Because if we compete and start stealing from each other people and the salary here of the employees that work for us goes to 2,000, the industry dies. Because it's enough in this country, 2,000. And if they're not hungry, we die. So we have to be patient. And we have to protect because that's the competitive advantage that we have here. Right? So we have to be very careful in how we grow people because if we give it too fast, will be like Belarus, saturated, problem. So we have to work very slowly on, on the human resources. We have to work hard to bring investors from the outside. We have to work hard to bring projects from the outside. And we have to work super hard to bring people from the outside here. So that's why we took an initiative. We looked at the corona and says, OK, the corona, what impacts does it have on our advantages? And what impacts does it have to our disadvantages? Do we have suddenly a new advantage? We do. Whoa. Not, not much corona here. Whoop. We have an advantage, a new advantage. Now, the new world also suggests that when you work here, it's in practice very similar to when you work in Israel, but you're from home. We have a new advantage. You can work from anywhere. Wow, two advantages. Now let's act super fast. And I mean super fast. Let's create the best campaign on these advantages to the world. Shout, come here, we'll take care of you. Shout to investors, come here, we have people for you. Let's work together, great and amazing education. That's how I've learned that you build billion dollar companies and you succeed. You take everything to consideration. You understand who's with me, who's against me. You set an agenda, make it visible, and you win. Wonderful. That's a, that's a very wonderful track of changes uh, and the steps. Thank you for sharing your idea. And uh, Mr. George, so one of the uh, main challenge for local companies and to create and to increase the uh, economy has been to cross the borders and go international. Uh, so you have been working on international market uh, a lot and you have gained quite a bit of experience how, how to do so. If you have some, some of uh, advices or some of uh, steps like Mr. David uh, shared with us, what do you think could be done for local companies to go international and to uh, start generating more and more revenues so they are able to attract more people uh, um, to their companies as well? Um, speaking from from my perspective, from uh, perspective of, uh, as, as I mentioned in my speech, from a company that is willing to do investments in in uh, in this country and doing development or any type of IT engineering here, um, I would again stress on the factor that resources, the number of resources, is definitive for us as as an as a an investor who is willing to bring uh, a project of a mid-size or, or, or a larger size, we are looking for an opportunity to establish quickly, right? We, we have no luxury of um, doing that over, over a matter of years. So um, the only thing that I can say here is that uh, working more on the on development of those resources and as David mentioned, so that the companies locally do not have to fight for those resources is, is the key here. Otherwise, we will just have uh, inadequate uh, pay rates and inadequate uh, supply rates, and that will just not be any beneficial for anyone. So again, um, 
being a Georgian, I would love to bring the, 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 the investments here, and I will, uh, but with, with the growth of resources here. The more they grow, the more I will be able to set up new, new projects here, new companies, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, and uh, just uh, um, uh, I have a question with all of you, and it would be nice if you could uh, contribute to that too. Uh, so speaking of generally on the IT industry in Georgia, so what, uh, what is in, from the government uh, standpoint, what is in the agenda? Where do we see uh, Georgian IT marketing during the next five to 10 years? And what do you think that could be done to give extra boost to the uh, industry generally so that it becomes uh, the main driver of the economy of Georgia? Thank you very much uh, for the question. I would like to also reply what Mr. Zera mentioned in his, uh, in his speech. And I completely agree that this is the thing that we need to work together to attract international investors, to attract international companies. And this is one of our top objective, actually, to bring uh, international investors, most importantly, to bring international projects, something that the Georgian developers are people who live in Georgia and developing. So I don't exactly. uh, underline, uh, I'm not underlining that it should be Georgian citizens. I mean, of course, we are also happy to import uh, programmers, people here. Uh, who will work but will, will benefit hugely the Georgian economy. So this is something that uh, uh, needs to be done. I also agree that the train in training process, the companies should be, should be involved. Uh, uh, even though right now the government is providing the training services, this is something from the, you know, because we don't have numbers at all. So, so like the numbers is very low here in Georgia. So we want to somehow bring the number and 3,000 is not actually a very big number. I mean, we need to have... 10 like times that. 10 times that, like maybe 40,000. Exactly. 80,000. Exactly. Good. But of course, the government will not do everything. And the government is not willing to do everything. What government is uh, going to do is what we, are, uh, what we are proposing. This is the tax incentives. Uh, this is the another program, granting program that we have. And uh, for example, this uh, 650,000 lari program is something to also involve more angel investors. Investors to put money in the startups because it's a 50-50 contribution between the government. I know, of course, that we are very thankful that uh, you finance one of the startups uh, that we financed as well uh, with 650,000 lari. And um, uh, this, is, uh, this is the idea. Another uh, project, and you mentioned in, in Israel, and. Uh, to create incubators and accelerators, and of course, I mean, this is very important thing to do. Right now, we have accelerator, so world-class accelerator, 500 startups in Georgia. That's a good one. Silicon Valley, and they're managing, we gave them money, but they're managing, they're making decisions, and most importantly, it's not only governmental money that uh, they are getting. There is also one of the biggest bank of Georgia, which is Bank of Georgia, who provided a one million US dollar investment fund for all the startups who will be in this actual accelerator process. And this is, uh, you know, like the programs that I can count on my uh, one hand. And of course, this is not enough, but this is beginning, uh, first steps and something that we are lacking and we need to be more active from the government side is to attract more investors, more private money, and the private interest uh, in all uh, in all of this, because at the end we are talking about the business, and the business is something that should be managed by the private sector. Government is not focused on uh, doing business by themselves. Yes. We want uh, economic prosperity, and economic prosperity can come on from the business. So that's all. Thank you. Do you have some more contribution from your side as well? Can I? Can I? I think I think we all mentioned, and we all want to do education better. And I think that uh, when I'm sitting here and I'm looking at your need to get people, you all spoke about guys in high school. So eventually, when you hire somebody to your production company, it costs you money. You can pay it to an HR company, you can, but it costs you money. When you educate people, it costs the one who gets the education some money. He gets sponsorship. That's a problem. It slows things down. When you work together, you create a situation that 
the companies can make sure that this guy understands that if he will be good, he will get a job. The financing of the education can come from the government and the return of that loan can come from the companies, speeding things up. Because if you are a student and you basically want to go to learn, right, you say, will they take me to a job? Do I have 2,000? I'll go to my uncle, commit for 2,000, whatever. It doesn't work. If you're smart and you pass the tests, we'll teach you. The companies will guarantee that they'll take them and we get to 60,000. Now, it doesn't matter if the university is here or the guy which is smart is working in Batumi because he can participate in working online. So it's just getting to work together. And if we do, it'll speed things up. And if we don't, we'll just compete for the few ones who are, I don't know, had enough balls or a rich uncle to pay them for the school. We need to take them at the end, teach them what's relevant for us, and run. And over time, that investment or the group who helped this student learn will get their money back with an interest. So we have to think differently together because it fixes the whole economy. So we took an initiative to do it ourselves. We as Webbies, we are working to actually tell people, listen, we'll pay for education and we'll, 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 we'll give you a job in order to speed things up. We open up what we call a WeLive.Tech initiative, telling companies around the world, listen, if you come here, you bring five people of your developers from Israel, they live here, it's a fantastic life, you pay less tax, your money buys two times, and you have the best area in the world, then you build another team, another 50 people around the five that you, bought, you brought in here. So it's a new proposition that with the wind of the corona can happen. So I think that it's time, actually, for the government to do a very simple thing, define digital economy as a national priority. Guide the government institutions to strive to collaborate with business people with the intent of keeping the maximum of the money of labor in Georgia. Not incentivize taking money to Ukraine, money here. Credit companies for employing new students work together and all the government needs to say is important and you will see people from all over Europe writing checks to help because that's the way to work. Thank you. Uh, Givi or George, do you have uh, some ideas to contribute but we are on very short time so just a couple of seconds. A uh, couple of words. Uh, sure. I totally agree. Education is uh, and what we see in the future in the next five years I see we, we need all private companies local companies international companies government work out to achieve for uh, 40 hundred people to achieve more IT specialists in Georgia this is the main goal and we also should attract um, by this create a destination for international customers to come here and to work with local talents and not only our local talents and I guess next five years will be will change this industry dramatically. This is what we believe in. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Georg? Yeah, I would just want to add to what David said that um, I personally would be willing to invest part of the uh, money that goes to recruitment, which is a kind of a shorter term goal to a longer running strategy as David suggested into a fund, a shared capital or whatever that would uh, help bring in up more, uh, more qualified personnel uh, which is a longer running strategy as opposed to what we are doing right now. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Last just, thing, edu just, uh, we have education, we talked about education. Education is not only getting somebody to the point he gets a salary. We have a lot of developers that need more education as they learn. I'm bringing, we are bringing into Georgia a lot of technology to enable distance working as well as distant learning. It's a thought freedom now of how to learn and who learns and where you learn and who pays for what you learn. 
Today, developers that want to learn, they must learn. If they don't study as they go, they will become obsolete. So we have not only to educate the new guys that are coming, we have to make sure that whatever people we have, we keep educating them. We keep creating growth for, for the people. And I think, again, on this level, sponsoring technologies that are coming here in order to make sure that we have the tools, the modern tools that actually understand where we are now with this corona, if we act fast, it'll be very important. You mentioned before that you started to understand what people want. We need to build a database. What's the knowledge of this country? I, I think we need to have all the developers in this country go into the system, tell us what they know and what they want to know. So we have a database here in this country of what is the actually landca landscape of knowledge in this country. You know, maybe incentivize them. Give them, I don't know, 100 lorry. So we built a database. Through that, we can later on educate them. We build a map of where our starting point is and where we want to go. So online education and data management of seeing where we are is really the, the, the set of tools that needs to be part. If we had a, a consortium, all of us, saying, how do we build it together, this digital economy, there would be some tools that are there you know, to make it happen in a professional way. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the panelists for, for your uh, thoughts uh, and for sharing your thoughts with our audience. So my main takeaways uh, from this uh, panel discussion are that our uh, standing uh, pillar where we have to begin is to uh, advance the educational system and advance the skills and capacity of the professionals of the, uh, of the uh, IT industry. And another uh, takeaway is that uh, government has uh, issued a new law uh, that will be very much supporting of uh, getting Very more smart. people in country and also reducing the cost for the company so they can reinvest in development and uh, broadening uh, their companies. And we all agree that we have to um, put digital transformation and digital uh, economy as an, a priority and make it a goal of the day of the year of the of the next 10 years the decade. so that yes so that uh, the country uh, reaches to the point where uh, um, uh, IT is the main uh, driving force of the economy so thank you again uh, to you uh, for all your thought thank you to audience for listening uh, if you have any questions our panels will be more than glad to uh, respond uh, and thanks to the online audience as well who are look, uh, watching us from different parts of the world today. Yes, please. Uh, uh, I think we can. I can. We I can, can hear, you. hear you. And also. Belarus. Can I? Thank you, thank you so much for your... Can I? 
Uh, Jess, uh, we okay. have, uh, unfortunately, we'll, uh, we ran out of the time uh, to, uh, for the discussion. However, we we'll still will have uh, some chance to uh, do some networking and exchange the ideas. Thank you very much for coming, and thank you very much for sharing your uh, thoughts as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.